Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. You join me bright and early this morning out in my Mark 7 Golf R. Now I'm actually on my way over to Martin's VW in Basingstoke to drop this car off for a quick service. Um, and very kindly, whilst this car is being serviced, they're chucking me the keys to the new Mark 8 Golf R. So it's gonna be quite interesting to drive the Mark 7 and the Mark 8 back to back. Of course, the Mark 8 is a car which I've been wanting to drive for an awfully long time. So a big thank you to the guys at Martins for actually making today possible. You guys may remember I've test driven a few of their demos before, of course the T-Rock R um, uh, initially and then the Mark 8 Golf GTI um, shortly after that. So I think the natural progression to that is of course the Mark 8 Golf R. Um, there has been a few videos already uploaded of the Mark 8 Golf R on the channel um, but of course I'm yet to drive one so I'm incredibly excited and of course whilst this car is off being serviced we are going to be going to see what it is like. So I think what we'll do um, we'll carry on on the M3, got a couple more junctions, and then we'll be there at Martins to collect the Mark 8 Golf R. Here it is then folks, my Golf R for the day. Finally getting behind the wheel of the Mark 8 and have a look at this, looking stunning in gloss black. We've got the performance pack spec on this particular car along with the 19 inch diamond cut wheels and the Akrapovic exhaust. I think this is probably pretty much the best kind of specced Mark 8 Golf R which I can possibly get for a first drive. So as you can probably imagine, I am incredibly excited. So let's hop in, get it fired up and go and find some nice roads. behind the wheel of the Mark 8 Golf R. And it's definitely not slow, I can, I can definitely tell you that. Wow. So we have the infamous EA888 Generation 4 engine up front. That is, of course, the two litre four cylinder turbocharged engine. Um, pretty similar to what you'd find um, in the Mark 8 GTI and also the 7 and 7.5 generations of the GTI and R. It produces 315 brake horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque. Nought to 60 takes just four and a half seconds and that is mainly down to the incredible seven speed DSG, which again is pretty similar to what you'd find in the previous generations. Comparing this to the Mark 8 GTIs, I feel that that's probably the best thing to compare it to at this moment in time. Um, there's always been a very big difference uh, in terms of performance between the GTI and the R, bear with. But I think in the Mark 8, that difference is that touch a little bit more. So let me just explain. The Mark 8 Golf GTI puts out 240 brake horsepower and 370 newton meters of torque. Comparing that with this, that is a difference of 75 horsepower and 50 newton meters of torque. And especially with the different drivetrains of the cars, the GTI being front wheel drive and the Golf R being all wheel drive, that extra power and then the way that it delivers it makes it unbelievably fast in fact one way to really prove that is the difference in 0 to 60s four and a half in this and over six in a dsg mark 8 gti so that's like one and a half second difference from zero to 60 which is unbelievable now hopefully this chap in his lorry will move out of the way very shortly and we will continue to enjoy <laughs> <laughs> that backfire then we will continue to enjoy these country roads because this is where this car is at home <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
and it's so easy to drive as well like you don't feel intimidated by it you don't feel like it's going to slip away from you because it's just stuck to the road no matter the weather really it is threatening to rain today um but yeah the, the grip levels are absolutely on point uh, of course that haldex system working wonders as it always has and as it always will do the dsg again phenomenal gearbox i mean look at this we're in fifth we're in fourth we're in third we're in second but <laughs> unbelievably quick amazing gearbox Now this car has the performance pack uh, spec, um, which does include a few very, very important to me uh, optional extras than a standard uh, Mark 8 Golf R. Seeing as we're driving it, it's probably worth mentioning the difference uh, that you get with that. Um, the speed limiter is taken off, so the electronically limited 155 in the standard Mark 8 R um, is removed, and therefore the top speed of 168 is unlocked. I don't know if you can hear these, these cracks, but for an OPF car, it's not bad, not bad at all. off topic there um, also with the performance pack you get the 19 inch diamond cut wheels which of course this car has because it has the performance pack those are diamond cut and do look very very nice indeed and as well as that you also get a lovely spoiler extension on the rear uh, which i show you in more detail when we stop uh, in a little bit later on in the video and i show you around the car now one thing which volkswagen have kind of given us um, in the mark a is something very very different for a performance vw and that is drift mode uh, now actually down here on the mode selector once you're in race you then have drift and special unlocked special is actually uh, signified with a nice Nürburgring logo which is <laughs> quite amusing but then if you're to click drift then basically you're in drift mode now that is basically made possible thanks to a torque vectoring rear diff which then basically um, sends all the power to the outer wheel whichever kind of where you're turning if that makes sense um, therefore making drifting possible which is just crazy to think about that a Golf R can then actually drift. But we need to try that out at some point. I don't think today's the right time though. <laughs> now, as I mentioned, the car is an absolute piece of cake to drive and that's not a bad thing at all. Um, it's very easy for kind of high powered, small little cars to feel quite intimidating and overpowering. Um, this, you just get it and it gives you a whole load of confidence, which can potentially get you in a little bit of trouble if you do get carried away. But just all in all, the driving experience is exactly uh, what a Golf R should be in my eyes. I'm a big fan of them, as you probably uh, are aware by now. Um, I stand by them a lot. Um, and yeah, the Mark 8 is definitely no exception to that rule. On to my favourite bit of road. <laughs> I cannot not do a first drive video without driving this bit of road. Unbelievable stretch. God, it just pushes you around the corners. Brakes are exceptional on this because they are, quite frankly, absolutely massive. <laughs> God, it corners really well. You can just plant it and it will just go around <laughs> at an unbelievable speed. I can only imagine what this thing's out like on track, actually. My ears are popped <laughs> that I've been going so quickly around corners. Oh dear. That is every bit of four and a half seconds to 60. That wasn't even launch control as well. <laughs> oh mate, I mean this smile, this smile says it all. Absolutely incredible bit of kit. It just all, joins together and just works the braking the steering the power the torque <laughs> yeah i'm having a lot of fun absolute riots of a car
I'm going to be honest now, I personally don't understand the bad press that the Mark 8 gets, whether it is the Golf R or the Golf GTI. I personally think that the Mark 8 genuinely is a step up. I mean, I love my Mark 7.5 Golf R and I love currently my Mark 7 Golf R, but I think in every right, this is an upgrade. I think the looks are phenomenal. The angle that you're looking at right now is by far my favorite one. With the performance back, you've got that lovely rear spoiler extension. Of course, you've got the Agropovich exhaust and the 19 inch diamond cut wheels. Um, I think these wheels are a lot better than the standard ones, the 18 inches, even though the 18 inches really do accentuate the size of the front discs, which are like 257 mil drilled discs from standard. They're absolutely huge for a stock car. But aside from that, I think the 19s do look a lot better and I am a sucker for a diamond cut wheel, that is for sure. Now the Mark 8 Golf R only comes in three colors actually. This color here is deep black pearl. You can also of course have lapis blue or you can have pure white. I think if it was me, I would choose Probably my first choice would be Lapis Blue. Of course, the two Golf R's I've owned have both been Lapis Blue. And I think this would be my second choice because the stealthed out spec on this with the diamond cut wheels and the blue calipers looks absolutely spot on. Now, I'll be honest, I was expecting big things from this car. I love the Golf R and that's definitely no secret on this channel. I was always very intrigued to see what this thing was like. And to be honest, it's ticked all the boxes for me. I have had an absolute blast today driving this thing. Some of the roads which I've picked and the routes which I've picked have been absolutely perfect. This plus some B roads here in the UK, absolute perfection. But it's built for any kind of scenario, really, like I've mentioned in previous Golf R related videos. You can cruise this on the motorway and just have a lovely time. You can smash it down some B roads and have an equally as lovely time. Or in this case, you can put it in drift mode or special mode, which I'll get onto in a moment, and it will turn into an absolute animal. Nothing like what we've seen in a Golf R before. But let me show you around because there's definitely some things which I want to pinpoint on this car, both on the exterior and the interior. Um, and to be honest, I have been carried away driving this thing today that I probably should have shown you a little bit more than I already have. Now, both the Golf GTI and R definitely do have their color schemes. The GTI is most definitely red and the R is most definitely blue. Now, there are blue touches all over this car, both on the exterior and interior, but it's definitely worth noting. It's not really over the top. You don't have this blue decal everywhere. Just nice, subtle little bits um, here and there. Um, up front, we have this blue bar, which runs right the way through the front of the car, through the headlights and through the central section. Um, that is just above the light bar, which is new for the Mark 8, um, which I'm actually quite a big fan of. It looks really aggressive when you got it on um, directly from the front. Just below that though, we have one of many R badges on this car, of course. This R badge is one which we've never seen before. This is brand new for the Mark 8. I'll be completely honest, at first I wasn't really a fan, but I think with the whole sleek approach with this car, I think it does work. I mean, you've got to modernize it. With the GTI, they've really kept that kind of retro feel with the square font on the GTI badging. But the R is actually quite a, a new and modern day product for VW. So I think they had to modernize it, especially with a whole new generation with the Mark 8. I don't think the front is actually the most aggressive part of the car, even with the light bar on, but I don't think it's bad looking. I mean, still you have these lovely LED lights and the double intakes on either side, but definitely all round, especially as you go to the back, that's where things get really aggressive. Uh, but before that, there's a couple of things I really want to show you in detail on the side of the car. I mean, come on, feast your eyes on the size of these front brakes. 257 mil drilled discs from factory, no matter if your car has the performance pack or not. Of course, those nice big blue calipers as well, and a nice little R emblem on the wheel as well. You have some quite subtle side skirts, again, just in factory color, um, but do protrude quite a lot. And I imagine in the aftermarket, people are gonna do some kind of extensions to that. And I think that's gonna look really cool. But as you get to the back, my favorite angle of this car, the rear end of this really does work. And I think with the GTI especially, some people weren't really a fan of the rear end especially. Maybe because it looked a little bit too plain, maybe it looked a little bit too square, but I think with the performance pack on the Mark 8 Golf R, 
it works exceptionally well. I mean, come on, you can't deny that that is a good looking rear end. This spoiler extension, I'm gonna pinpoint it again. I love how you have this central piece here, but you can see through it rather than just a, a solid lip spoiler. So right directly from the back, you can see through it, which makes it look even bigger, which is great. Um, this diffuser from standard as well is really quite aggressive. These fins do protrude quite a lot. Um, this with the Akrapovich upgraded exhaust, um, it works, it really works. And actually the standard tips are actually quite big as well. Um, so the kind of exhaust tip itself is actually quite thick, making it look a little bit bigger. Um, and in the standard case, um, it is kind of a polished effect. Um, similar to the Mark 8 GTI as well, um, the badging on the rear has actually relocated to the center. What do you guys think of that? I said in my GTI video that I was a fan, and I think that does really correlate across to the R as well. Very simplistic logo, of course, the same one that was on the front and all around the car. But I think in general, the rear end of this car is absolute perfection. Maybe if the performance pack wasn't fitted or wasn't specced from new, then it would look slightly less uh, crazy. But I do agree with what VW have done of kind of making the GTI um, a little bit more standard, less kind of wings and diffusers and everything like that. Um, because at the end of the day, it's not the range topper. This for now is, and I think, yeah, it works really, really well. In the hot seat then of the Mark 8 Golf R, now like I mentioned when we were outside the car, the blue touches do continue in here. There's blue themes everywhere, but like I mentioned, it's not really over the top. But let me give you a run through about what we've got in here. Starting with the steering wheel, this is the R Performance uh, steering wheel, flat bottoms, and it also has the perforated leather hand grips. Behind those, we have a really nice set of paddle shifters. Now in previous generations, the paddle shifters, especially on the Golf Rs, um, actually in, in the GTIs as well, if you opt for the DSG, um, they are kind of hidden behind the steering wheel, which is quite quite slick and subtle, but I think perhaps judging by the amount of people like myself when I had one put paddle extensions on them, this I think is definitely the right move. Um, on the steering wheel and actually all the way around the interior, there's a lot of touch sensitive buttons. The most important one, which I'm gonna focus on first, is the one lit up in bright blue, the R button, which basically at one press changes the car from comfort mode into sport mode, just like that. So you don't have to fiddle around with all the different driving modes on the central screen. The central screen, actually whilst speaking about that, that is of course touch screen, um, and it's basically your multimedia uh, screen, which does everything you'd expect it to do, your sat nav, your radio, and all the vehicle settings and everything like that. Um, moving along to the actual cockpit itself, the digital cockpit, which has had a big rejig from the Mark 7.5. I've currently got it in my favorite mode, my favorite display, which is basically the big rev counter in the middle with the G meter uh, and the temps to either side. There are I think over five different views which you can have, which you can basically press and change through the view button on the steering wheel. Also on the steering wheel, you have all your usual buttons for the cruise control and basically to flick through and navigate everything on the screen in front of you. These seats, very, very nice. These are the upgraded seats. Um, these are actually kind of a perforated uh, kind of finish with little blue bits in the seats as well. We have blue piping and actually blue accents on the rear of the seat as well. Um, very comfortable, but also very supportive. These bolsters are very strong. Uh, they don't really seem like they're going to deteriorate over time. They're not like rock hard, so it's difficult to get in and out. But once you're in, they're nice and comfy. You can definitely do uh, a nice road trip in this in comfort. Also on the seat as well, you do have a nice R embroidery. Um, and I think overall these seats are actually really rather nice with the carbon uh, kind of effect on the outer bolster as well. Similar to the Mark 8 GTI in the middle here, there's a lot of space around here at all. Of course, you have this little toggle for the gear selector. I think maybe at first people may think that it's actually quite a flimsy little thing to, to deal with, but it's not. It's very sturdy and actually reminds me quite well of uh, a Porsche 992, which is a bonus. Um, above that, you of course have the engine start stop, uh, the park button, and of course the auto hold and electronic handbrake. Like I mentioned, you don't really have a big clunky gear stick in the middle here. So it does seem quite spacious and there's a lot of space up kind of underneath the dashboard in the middle um, for your little bits and bobs. Now, as you've probably noticed from this video, this specific car, which I'm in today, is an extremely high spec. Virtually every option has been ticked, including a nice sunroof above me here. That's definitely an option, which I've missed in both of my Golf Rs, which I've owned. So always nice uh, to have a sunroof. And it actually means that I can do my favorite ever GoPro angle, which is by putting a GoPro up there, pointing down at my point of view. But I think overall, the interior of this car is very subtle, very sleek, um, but not over the top 
and definitely a nice comfortable place to be. And I think overall this car definitely does get my seal of approval. Um, there's been a lot of hype and a lot of anticipation to see what this thing is like and finally having had some decent time behind the wheel of it um, and actually to have a number of examples on the channel now, I can definitely safely say I am a fan but I can't quite afford it. That though is going to wrap things up for me today and the Mark 8 Golf R. Again, finally, really, really happy to finally have driven this thing and hopefully it won't be too long until we get some modified examples on the channel as well. Um, now, as you may have guessed as well, this is Martins of Basingstoke's brand new demo car. So if you do want to learn more about it and if you are interested, then please do follow the contact details in the description to uh, basically book a test drive. I guarantee it, you will not be disappointed. This specific car here is an absolute weapon. A big thank you does go to those guys for continuously supporting me and giving me these cars, especially when I have my car in their workshop being served. So I need to go and take this back and get my keys to the uh, very outdated Mark 7 Golf R. But uh, regardless, the Golf R Mark 8 definitely has my seal of approval. And do let me know down in the comments what you think of the car. Has this changed your mind? Do you like it? Do you not like it? I don't know. I'll be interested to hear. Let me know. But I think for now, at least, that is going to be it for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure to subscribe for all the adventures still to come. Thank you.